Hey everybody, Stephen here, and today we're going to be talking about intra abdominal pressure um, and kind of just like a quick general overview of what it is, why we use it. Now, this can get a lot more complex than what I'm going to be talking about today. This is kind of my overview that I talk about with clients. Uh, if you want to get far more complex and kind of in the weeds with this stuff, you can look into dynamic neuromuscular stabilization, DNS. And they have like 20, 30 courses, um, certifications that you can do. Uh, and I've gone through their sports one, amazing modality. You can do grip approach with, uh, that's uh, Benjamin Fergus. Um, that's his program, which is kind of built off of DNS. So that's Global Rehabilitation Injury Prevention. I've gone through that certification as well. I've gone through all the parts of his certification. Um, very, very good. Gets in deep with uh, the intra-abdominal pressure as well. Um, a lot of other systems use this. They may talk about it in a different manner. But with this, essentially what we're looking at here is that your midsection is a cylinder, okay? So this is what most people just call their abs or their core. When we're looking at that, this, this is a cylinder. It goes all the way around. But for most people, what they just talk about is kind of the superficial muscles that we're looking at. We're talking about like the rectus abdominis and they're talking about their obliques, right? This has many more layers to it, especially when I get into the back and I'm getting into my quadratus lumborum. We start talking about uh, your multifidus when we're getting in, in deep with this, right? Uh, you're seeing get into your psoas and your iliacus and all these other things as well. But there's a lot more going on here than just my abs, okay? So when I'm lifting something, deadlift, uh, if I'm doing a barbell squat, goblet squat, I'm doing kettlebell swings, anything like that, and really just lifting in general, um, those are just ones that most people are going to think of where especially we need like maximum intra-abdominal pressure But when you're moving you need some level of intra-abdominal pressure But load is really going to be the thing that dictates and tells me that I'm going to need to be more conscious of it and I'm going to have to increase the amount that I have, okay? So if I'm walking, I don't need a high amount of intra-abdominal pressure I just need to make sure that I'm conscious of my breathing and I'm diaphragmatically breathing, right? diaphragmatically breathing properly. A lot of people talk about that too. It's like you're always diaphragmatically breathing. Um, it's just, it's disproportionate to the amount that your chest breathing, okay? So the diaphragm is always active when we're breathing. Just most people are up here and they're not breathing into the belly, right? And this would be considered like the belly. I'm breathing deep into the cylinder, not up here in my chest. So this, these lines, so this is the midsection here. These lines here we're looking at, that's that external force that we're putting on the body via load, whatever the lift may be. And I don't have a can here, this might work. But if I look at this, let me see if I got an empty one. Here we go, right? A midsection here, okay? Can would be a better illustration of this, but. So I have um, this, this is my midsection. And with this, I have external load. If I don't have this full of anything, and I could basically fill this full of air, I could breathe it tight and cap it, and then it would be hard for me to squeeze, right? That's why a full can would be better. Essentially, this full of air is what we're trying to create, because when I go to squeeze on it, it wouldn't budge. It's very hard for me to do that. That external force that I'm putting on it, that external load, has the internal force and pressure pushing out against me. This isn't full of anything. If I do external force, the more force, I can eventually just tumble this, right? And that's what we see happening with the body, is that there's a ton of external pressure, external force, external load, but people aren't breathing, they're not creating intra-abdominal pressure, and because they're not, we end up running into injuries, right? Like we talked about, there's a lot more going on here in terms of your musculature, and these deeper layers that we need to make sure are active that people are ignoring or just they're not aware of or they're not thinking of, right? And because of that, this external load over time creates a higher possibility that we run into an injury. So we end up herniating the disc, right? We end up pulling something, whatever it may be. This, by the way, has implications for everything. So this is my centerpiece. I think about this as my centerpiece and then everything else that's distal further away from that is affected by this more intra-abdominal pressure that I can create here, the stronger this is gonna be because it's an extension of this, okay? So, cueing this up, I have videos where I say, all right, here's 
uh, intra-abdominal pressure, here's how we can create it and all those other things. Um, I'm gonna put a link for that, but this is really the context around why do we even do that, right? And the big thing here is I need internal pressure to match external load or force that I'm putting on that body, right? Because if I don't, you just saw it, the pressure, if it's too much, it's gonna crush that, right? So I have something that's full, full water bottle, internal, right? But pretend it was air. When I go to squeeze on this, right? This is pushing out against me. It still has a little give to it, but it's pushing out against me. It would be harder for me to crush this right now than the one that had nothing in it to combat that force that I was putting on. So, deadlifts, these big lifts, super duper important, but this actually is something we take and we apply to a lot of other things. And that's why I recommend looking into something like DNS, Dynamic Neuromuscular Stabilization. I'll put links for some of that stuff. Looking into grip approach with Benjamin Fergus. Um, functional range conditioning talks about this. There's a lot of other modalities that talk about this. Um, the, the kettle guy, bell guys understand it, right? So they, they understand um, whether that's the Russian kettlebell certification or strong first. You'll hear them, it's just the cueing's different. They want you to because they do a bracing technique. And they want you to be verbal with it. Karate, same thing. You'll hear like, like or whatever, kia, whatever the action is, they want you to brace, okay? We are just adding an extra layer of consciousness to this where we're breathing in through the nose, trying to fill this. And not only just trying to fill this, but especially with grip approach, which is why I love that certification, that modality. How even is this? And by having some pockets that we call, basically we, we say they're having leaks, right? I'm leaking down here. I need to cue this up because I know if I don't have good pressure here, but I have it everywhere else, right? It's gonna go to the back because that's not as supported as the rest of this. So basically that leak is, right? If I had a leak in this can, I had a hole and I went to prep, squish it right here, but there's a cut, boom, it's gonna blow out on that end, okay? West side barbell, right? If you look at, uh, is it Louis Fitzsimmons? You look at his stuff, um, he braces. He tells these guys, he's known about this for a long time. Now he doesn't cue it the same way, but he understands the notion of bracing against the external force. Anybody that wears a weight belt, Right? You're doing it, it's just not to the same level that these other modalities are basically saying that you need to be aware of. And this is where I do think it's important, but the belt, if I put it around me, it's so I can breathe in and push against it. It's reminding me, one, it's a belt, so yeah, it's creating some type of structure around my back so that I'm supported. The other thing is that if I brace against it, which is what West Side Barbell guys and powerlifters are gonna do, but if I deep breath and push against it, right? It gives me something that's tactile that my body understands, okay, I can push that internal pressure against that. And now I have a very, very solid cylinder here in order to maximize the amount that I can lift and reduce the chance of any type of injury. So hopefully that helps anybody. If there's anything that I didn't cover, or maybe you need a better explanation of, let me know in the comment section. I'll definitely do that for you. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do hope this helps. Anything else that uh, you would want to see, like I said, let me know in the comment section, even if it's not related to this, just because it helps with my content. I wanna make some, I wanna make my content basically things that are really gonna help you guys that, especially if you can't afford a personal trainer, these are long-winded explanations. All this stuff I cover with my clients. Everybody has to look at this stuff. And I do it in a long format, which is what I really wanted to do with this channel. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, check back soon for more videos. Not only the intra-abdominal pressure stuff, but we're going to get more back into the natural movement stuff. We'll get into some correctives, lifting technique stuff as well. And uh, anything else that you guys want to see, let me know and I will cover that too. Thanks for watching.